right, hello wine drinking people. Time for more of what I've had to drink yesterday and our good friends from Constellation stopped in with some new releases and I know what you're thinking. Newton is not part of Constellation, but we snuck that in there because the guys from Coastal were in next to them. Anyways, really good, really comparable to the Mondavi Reserve Cabernet, which is uh, the iconic wine from this portfolio now, other than the Opus One, of course. And uh, these guys have got wineries all over the world, the largest wine group in the world. <laughs> uh, but they do have some good wines. And uh, Kim Crawford, one of the uh, original names that you saw coming out of New Zealand and uh, Kim, I don't think is associated with this, this anymore, but this is your classic Marlboro Sauvignon Blanc, the 2013, a great vintage for New Zealand. This wine's got a nice touch of that green peppercorn spice on the nose, white grapefruit, kiwi, and some grassy notes there as well. Good amount of fruit here, fruit cocktail-like fruit on the tongue with a nice tangy finish. Some salty minerally highlights leaves the tongue salivating for food. Very good juice. At $14.75, man, you're a cheap date if you like New Zealand Sauvignon Blancs. You can get some really good stuff for under $15. Even the big guys make decent wine. All right, Franciscan Chardonnay Cuvée Sauvage 2011 from Carneros. A very difficult vintage in Carneros for Chardonnay, but this is a famous wine. It's still made using the wild natural yeasts, and it's got a good amount of toasty oak spice on the nose, a little bit of vanilla bean creme brulee, good amount of ripe tropical fruits, and nice richness here for a wine uh, for, uh, from 2011, but definitely a little lighter in style. That touch of toasty oak spice showing up on the finish, a texture of skim milk. Some, some nice minerality here showing at the end, but fairly light, like I said, for $32. A very good little wine, a lot of competition. California Chardonnay. All right, the Estancia Meritage, this one for 20 bucks, a really good little value. Paso Robles just turning out the hits, a variety of really nice wines there for 20 bucks. This wine's Cabernet Sauvignon with Merlot Petit Verdot in the blend, and it changes every year, and uh, the vineyard sources cha have changed over the years for this wine. It wasn't Paso Robles originally, and uh, this wine's got a good amount of fine herbs here on the nose, and a light minty note to the currant and cherry uh, kind of plum fruit there, a soft and drinkable style on the tongue uh, with some of that herb and some of that spice showing up next to the red berry and currant fruit on the finish. A very good little wine, though, at $20, a very drinkable style, and a real crowd pleaser. The Mondavi Carneros Reserve, 61.25. Ooh, wow, I can almost get the Cabernet Reserve for that much. Anyways, this wine's got a good amount of spice around the nose, some pretty floral notes of the raspberry and strawberry fruit, some fresh earth, but the focus here really on the, on the light red berry fruit and a nice amount of spice here on the tongue, some pretty floral notes. Silky smooth tan, it's light but pleasant finish. It's just a little bit, uh, expecting a little more for that price. Anyways, and then, then you show Mark West. See the Lucha Highlands after that? I think we should have shown the Mark West first, maybe even before the Sauvignon Blanc. Anyways, this is a big producer. This may be one of their smaller production wines, but, I mean, this wine, not very impressive at all. Even though the price is $13.50, it tastes like a cheap bottle of Pinot Noir to me. Anyways, life is too short to drink cheap Pinot Noir. All right, next we have the Mondavi Reserve Cabernet. Hoo-wah, this is 100% Tokalon fruit, one of the greatest vineyards in Napa, and this is a big wine, the 2010, a classic year, showing a good amount of dark currant and dark berry fruit in the nose, notes of coffee, some fresh loamy earthy notes, dark chocolate herbs, some minty notes to the dark berry fruit, a very firm wine on the tongue, this wine, these 2010s are going to need some time, a solid core of dark cherry, dark uh, cassis fruit, uh, that cocoa and loamy earth, the earthy notes showing through on the finish, but a firm hand of acidity is what you notice here. This wine's very well built, needs some time, but it's got everything in proportion. Even better on the second day, most excellent juice. $124.50, yeah, you can find it on sale for $89.95, bucks, under $100 bucks still. And then the Newton, the Puzzle. This is uh, one of the iconic wines of Napa. The first wine Michelle Roland, I believe, worked for. And uh, it's a blend of all the Vordo varietals, um, except Merlot. They took the Merlot for some reason. All the state fruit. This wine is a little monster of the 2010, as I mentioned before. And really big vintage. Dark currant, cassis fruit on the nose. Dark chocolate, sweet tobacco spice. A nice hand of fresh plowed earth here also. This wine is big, but still balanced. A lot of acidity here, but lots of everything. This wine needs a little time. Even better on the second day. Also, most excellent juice and, and under 100 bucks, 96.75. That's what we had to drink with our friends from Constellation and Newton. I'm your host, Andrew Lampasoni, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying remember, always drink the good stuff first. <laughs>